Game started. Okay, Alex82 kicks off with E4. What should I play here? How about a Sicilian? I haven't seen one of those in a while. Okay, I'll go back to my classical if I get a chance. Let's see, this is not the normal Sicilian though. This is the early knight c3. He hasn't played d4 yet. He could still play d4. Let's see, because he played knight c3 voluntarily, it means I don't have to play knight f6 to force it. So I could uh, keep that option in reserve, I guess. I'm going to just break the pin here and go for um, a uh, dragon setup with the bishop. Fianchetto, and then decide whether this go this knight might go to um, e7 as well as f6. Now he does the trade. Oh, that's interesting. Now, because he can... Oh, he can't take back with the queen. He has to take back with the knight. So I still get my bishop here. I was thinking he'd take back with the queen and get on this diagonal, but uh, in which case I'd have to block with the knight. But he had to take back with the knight uh, unless he took here first because my knight was guarding that square. Okay, so we've kind of uh, transposed. Maybe into some other kind of Sicilian. I don't know, this is just a Sicilian. <laughs> a no-name Sicilian. Okay, it's kind of like a Grand Prix attack going this way. F4 and... Uh, e4. Let's see, if I play e5 here, pawn takes, pawn takes. You know, it opens up this file, but it leaves them with, um, well, okay, let's, let's think a little deeper. If I go here and he takes and I take back, he's got to move his knight, probably knight back to f3, hitting the pawn. Can I defend that pawn? Maybe queen to uh, e7. A little bit shaky, a little bit shaky. I have a loose pawn here and a loose pawn here. But um, sometimes it's better to meet these pawns uh, head-on in the center rather than allowing them to proceed. You know, he pushes on with f5 and tries to open up squares around my king. This gives him an open f-file, but my knight at the moment is sufficiently protected. So his queen is looking at my bishop, the knight and the bishop. The knight and the queen defend the bishop. Yeah, so he starts by pinning the knight. Let's castle. <laughs> get out of the center. Maybe get a rook over here to the d-file. That looks like a useful thing to do. This pawn on c6, although it looks a bit weak, it keeps his knight out of some key squares, so it's actually very handy to have right there. Let's see. Was I threatening knight to g4? <laughs> I don't know why he played that move, actually. Okay, let's start with rook d8. Opposite is queen. See where the queen wants to go. I'm expecting the queen will move. Not a bad place. I always have this check here. Uh, let's un unpin the knight. Maybe knight to um, h5 to f4 is an idea here. So he just takes. Okay. Ah, maybe that was a mistake, putting my queen in a line with his uh, knight. I should have checked for discoveries. It looks like I'm okay. Yeah, knight. <clears throat> knight to um, d4 is an interesting move. He didn't play it. Okay. Knight d4, I'd have to move the queen, and then he would be hitting this pawn, but I guess it's sufficiently defended. Okay, let's drop back. Now things are, I think, pretty secure on my king's side. Still have this weak pawn here. Okay, what's he doing? He's just... Uh, Maybe he's preparing um, b4, or maybe it's a waiting move. Waiting to see where my where my play lies. I have this check. 
Is he waiting for me to give the check? <laughs> I, I want him to move the beep on and then I'll give the check. Let's see, is there a way to induce that beep on? How about if I push on with the A5? Maybe rip to uh, B8, looking at the B pawn as a way to encourage it to move. Well, Alex, Alex82, he's going to have to think here. Okay, queen there. Yeah, that stops me from playing the check. Okay, that's that's true. And it puts pressure on the C pawn. I still like this rook on the open B file. So maybe uh, when I played rook to D8, I should have used the F rook rather than the uh, rather than the A rook. Because I'm probably going to bring this rook over to D8 now. So I think uh, he needs to defend that pawn. I'm just going to take it. Or he could push it to that square, B3. Not, not a bad move. Now, maybe rook to C8 and bishop to uh, bishop to E6, hitting his queen. I do have the bishops for the end game, so uh, a bishop pair is some advantage here. But in the middle game, it's a bit tricky, and uh, we'll see. And my pawn structure is kind of messy, so that gives his knights opportunities. Yeah, right now his knight is trying to find a way into the game. So is bishop to e6 any good? <laughs> I'm letting go of this pawn here for the moment. Oh, the rook's still holding it. That was the point of rook to c8. Yeah. He wants to trade queens. Okay. Queen takes knight to s. And just a good square for his knight is the problem. Um, I really would like to uh, play my rook to um, b4 and chase... Maybe maybe get some control over that um, c5 square before I trade queens. Otherwise, the queen trade is not, not a bad idea for me. He can take here. And he does. Um, so I have a desperado tactic. I can play bishop takes b3, threatening to win his knight if he takes back. Um, but he can. he also has a desperado. He can play knight here or here. Then I can take his knight. He can take... Uh, I think I can play this. We'll find out. It's just because I'm threatening his knight here. So if he takes here, I can take the knight. And his knight is kind of pinned here. He could take here, but also I can take the knight. And he's not threatening anything else really there. So he grabs a bishop, and then I grab the knight. Oh, he goes here. That's an interesting way to play it. So where is he going from there? His next move, he can come here with check. Hmm. I get a piece, though. I, I get uh, the knight. He goes here with check. I move my king, and he takes a rook, and I take back. So it's two pieces for a rook. Um, is there another way to play it? I guess if I go here, threatening his queen, queen can still come into uh, e6, so it still keeps control over this square. Now let's go ahead and take take the material. <clears throat> Count things up after it's over. Check. Maybe I'm losing the. Um, maybe I am losing the. Um, no, I'm holding on to the f pawn. So it's two, two, three, four. Three, four, five. So he's got a pawn and a rook for pawn and rook for two minor pieces. He's got a check here. Maybe I should have gone to uh, h8. Okay, and uh, well, none of our 
neither side's pawns are much to look at, but I have four isolated pawns and he has four isolated pawn groups. <laughs> Three isolated pawns and a, a pair of pawns over here where his extra pawn lies. So interesting game. I, this is probably, um, I would say, probably an advantage to black. But maybe not so easy to play. Oh, he picks up another pawn immediately. How annoying. Okay, so bishop here hits his rook. And then rook here. I want to I want to pick up this pawn. I don't want to uh, leave it. Sometimes the bishops on pair of bishops on an open board can be very strong against his uh, That's interesting. He he gave away a pawn. But he can play check here. Check. And uh, drive my king back. This pawn is defended by the bishop as well as the queen and the king. Maybe he can bring his... Uh, I can't bring his rook in here because I have bishop to uh, e6, so rook d7 is not such a great idea. They did manage to get an outside pass pawn. But overall, the balance is still the same, and his uh, his rook is still hanging. Okay, what next? Um, if you can't play rook d7, he he probably just needs to move the f rook. I'm expecting rook f to uh, f2 or three or four. This, just somewhere along this file. Rook F2. Okay, fine. I have bishop here. <laughs> How about if I trade off one pair of rooks and then try and skewer his, uh, skewer his rook there? My other idea was going after the uh, A pawn, which maybe is more, more dangerous. So now threaten to come to the back rank with check and also threaten bishop here with the skewer. Aha, uh -huh, so he runs away from both of those. I've got a check here. Check. Let's go ahead and give that one. Picks up the pawn at least. Then I'll bring my queen back. This bishop is loose, so that may be a problem at some point. But the bishop can go to... Um, Check. Uh, okay, he might go for a draw here. Let's see. If I go king to um, h7, he's got this check. And I really have to go back. If I play bishop to f8, am I losing? He has queen here check. <laughs> you know, I may have to just put up with a draw. It's, uh, it's My king position is a little too wrecked here. Check. If he if he goes for it, I really can't escape it. Oh, I can bring my queen back. Ah, Let's see if he repeats, then I'll bring my queen back. Because I think I'm better here. I don't check. think I should be satisfied with the draw. I just... Thought that I had only bishop back. I didn't didn't notice the queen back move. So two bishops against a rook in the end game. Ah, he picked up a pawn. That's his idea. More. That's that's a good idea. And let's bring my loose bishop back into the game. <laughs> back to a safe position. I mean, not not into the game. Hmm. So maybe queen to um, c8 here with a. Uh, threat on the h-pawn and uh, attempt to trade queens again. Yeah, my position is just a bit awkward here with the <laughs> exposed king. Hard to escape all those checks. And this bishop, the dark squared bishop, is just acting like a pawn pretty much, but but it lurks. It, it always has the idea of coming out and, and harassing pieces. Okay, so he's hitting the pawn. It's getting back to defend his back rank, so 
I play here, what does he do? I'm still threatening the h pawn and threatening to threatening his queen, yeah. Check. So he goes for the endgame. Well, let's see if I can play this endgame. You know, maybe just even two rooks. I mean, two bishops against a rook and a pawn may be an even endgame. But I think that's one of those that should be a slight, slight edge <coughs> to black here. Okay, let's let's get my king into the game. Let's uh, bring the bishop out. I was thinking maybe I should just stop his pawns at a good spot. So how do I actually win this? <laughs> I have to keep at least one pawn alive to, to win this. So uh, he sacks his rook for a bishop and a pawn, and I've already traded off my other pawn. That would, that would be kind of drosh. And let's see. This is the uh, good bishop here. I want to keep the light squared bishop <laughs> because uh, this is the... If I end up with a rook pawn, then... Uh, Yeah, the rooks, rooks can always be harassed by bishops. And notice how the bishop pair it sort of defends each other. You can't the, the two bishops sort of defend each other. You can't go here or here to harass the dark squared bishop. It's a funny thing, but the, the bishops are pretty strong. So I was thinking push all the way to here. Okay, so he closes that up. Let's um, get this pawn forward. It covers this square, so he can't come in and check me. And I could put my bishop here, my light squared bishop here, and my dark squared bishop here, and he can never break through. But can I ever? Uh, can I ever make progress? Is the question. <laughs> Need to see if I can get my king around. thing is the bishops are defending all of my pawns kind of neatly and uh, let's see if I could get uh, the king here I could bring my bishop in the check or you know bishop here if I could get my king to the square where the bishop is uh, I think uh, Hold on a second. I can't go forward, and if I walk around this way, his king is his rook is cutting me off. He has some tempo moves, so I can't ever. Well, let me make a slight effort here. I'm, I'm going to offer a draw in a few moves. I think. Uh, yeah, maybe I can harass his. Um, I'll bring my king to here, and then I'll bring my bishop to harass his rook and try and escape this way. Check. Let's see. Yeah, if he keeps my king out, I guess I don't see how I can make progress. Let's see. Can I walk over here and take all the squares away from his rook? I think I can, actually. Look at this. The bishops are controlling these squares. And my king from uh, b7 here will control these three squares. So his rook will have to give ground. And then I can come forward again and uh, 
Again, I can harass his rook, it looks like. So, go forward again. <laughs> Hopefully not losing anything. The bishop can escape back to this square. So I can place my bishop here and then walk my king around to this square. So I've succeeded in invading. I don't know if that was entirely uh, forced, but uh, this is a, a big a big step, step in the right direction. And his king, look at my bishops are preventing his king from getting into the game altogether. So uh, here, I'm winning a pawn. White forfeits on time. Okay, but I think actually I, I turned this into a winning endgame. So pretty interesting, if long game. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll uh, see you again soon. Bye.